Okay, guys, I'm here to give you my review of the 2022 WWE Royal Rumble pay-per-view. Now, I know I'm almost two weeks late on this, but, well, I had a major high <laughs> uh, to get off, and that was the Bengals making the Super Bowl, so I had to fully process that and then let the game go before I actually was able to uh, get that. So, I'm here now, and I do want to congratulate the LA Rams on winning the Super Bowl. Eh, that's what happens sometimes, isn't it? But, whatever. Anyway, Royal Rumble 2022, January the 29th, 2022, from, I believe it's the Dome of America Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, this was an actually decent, pretty little show. Of course... A Royal Rumble of actual fans is nice compared to last year, but anyway, the opening match, because there was no kickoff match, which was actually surprising, but uh, opening match, Universal Championship match, Roman Reigns versus Seth Rollins, a uh, really good match actually here, uh, you know, because the story here, you have Seth Rollins uh, dressed as the old Shield attire, coming out with the Shield music, and really getting Roman Reigns' head. And, you know, a lot of good back-and-forth stuff here. Uh, Rollins does the pedigree from the uh, Spear, uh, which was um, the finish of their match at uh, Money in the Bank 2016. Uh, so that was a nice little callback. Uh, but in the end, Roman Reigns got disqualified because he wouldn't break the guillotine. And then he destroyed Rollins with a chair. That goes into Roman's psyche, and that was a really good actual uh, story there. Uh, three and a half star match, this, uh, so, yeah. Then it's the 2022 Women's Royal Rumble match, uh, right? This is the best Rumble of the two Royal Rumbles. This was actually the best one. It starts with, uh, Sasha Banks and Melina, who last I knew was working for the NWA, so, uh, Melina gets eliminated in about, uh, 35 seconds, Probably due to a botch, and it most likely was. And in the Royal Rumble, it's not like you if they if people see you go to the floor, it's not like you can redo the spot. So that'd be like that. So number three was Tamina. Four was Kelly Kelly. Uh, and before number and Kelly Kelly gets pretty much eliminated fairly quickly. Uh, then Aaliyah comes out. Six is lit at five is Aaliyah. Six is Liv Morgan. Seven is Queen Zelina. And then ace Bianca Belair, before that happens, Queen Zelina eliminates Sasha Banks, which was kind of a surprise, but maybe not. Uh, number nine was Dana Brooke. And we didn't get any 24-7 championship shenanigans, which was a surprise, because I thought they would have done that. Uh, nine, uh, t uh, ten was Michelle McCool, who... Set the elimination record for single rumble in the first women's rumble at uh, five. Of course, that was broken in 2020 by both Bianca Belair and Shayna Baszler. Uh, then we had Sonya Deville at 11, Natalia at 12, Cameron at 13, uh, in which Sonya Deville just quickly eliminated her because she turns Naomi. Who would have thunk that the one long-term booking that the WWE could think of is the thing between Sonya Deville, a non-wrestler technically right now, and Naomi. Because that... How long was that going to... Yeah, what? Four months or something? Since around Survivor Series or something like that? Anyway, Naomi comes out at 14. Briefly checks on Cameron and eliminates Sony Deville. Uh, Carmella comes out at 15. Rhea Ripley comes out at 16. And... Then Sony Deville eliminates Naomi, who was trying to do her Royal Rumble save. Uh... Charlotte Flair comes out at 17, which is the number she won the 2020 Royal Rumble from. And then Rio Lipley eliminates both Queen Zelina and Carmella. Uh, number 18 was Ivory, who's right to censor Ivory, who cuts a promo the entire time she comes in the ring, because she's still cutting the promo in the ring and still cutting the promo when she gets eliminated. So, props to that. Uh, she's eliminated by Rio Ripley quickly. Uh, 20, uh, 19 is Brie Bella. And her auto-tune music is still awful. Uh, 21 is Mickey James, who comes out with her Impact theme with the Impact Knockout Championship that the WWE does not call that. So that was the forbidden door that the WWE then, they opened it, but then they slammed it shut later in the night anyway. So, uh, 
21 was Alicia Fox, 22 was Nikki A.S.H., 23 was Summer Rae, who got eliminated really quickly, uh, 24 was Nikki Bella, 25 was the returning Sarah Logan, who had a reunion with the Riot, uh, with her, Liv Morgan, and then both of them were eliminated by the Bella Twins, so that shows you what the WWE may think of Liv Morgan now, huh? Uh, 26 was Lita, 27 was Mighty Molly, who gets jumped by, uh, Nikki A.S.H., that's kind of cool. Nikki A.S.H. also came from the crowd and beat up Rhea Ripley, but, uh, 28 is, uh, the returning Ronda Rousey, uh, 29 was Shotzi, and 30 was Shayna Baszler. Your final four are Shayna, Ronda, or Shayna Baszler, Ronda Rousey, Charlotte Flair, and, uh, Bianca Belair. Uh, Charlotte eliminates both Bianca and Shayna, and then Ronda Rousey just eliminates Charlotte with ease, and Ronda Rousey wins the Royal Rumble to go on to WrestleMania, where she'll be challenging Charlotte Flair for the SmackDown Women's Championship, because she wasn't going to announce on SmackDown that she'd be facing Becky Lynch for the Raw Women's title. Uh, and of course, who's going to be facing Becky Lynch, or whomever the Raw Women's Champion is, I'm guessing it'll be Becky Lynch, because I don't see Lita winning tomorrow night, uh, tomorrow afternoon in Saudi, uh, at Elimination Chamber, but that'll be decided tomorrow night too. Uh, tomorrow in the Elimination Chamber match. But yeah, a uh, four-star Rumble. Really good, entertaining Rumble. So we had the Raw Women's Championship match, Becky Lynch versus Dewdrop, which was a good match, but it's hard to follow a Royal Rumble, which can be the down point of having two Royal Rumbles. It's nice that they that the women have their own Royal Rumble, but on the other hand, you have a match that then has to follow a Royal Rumble, and it's a very hard match to follow. Uh, but good match, Dewdrop looked really good. Be uh, Becky won up a manhandle off the top rope, uh, or uh, no, the second rope, and won uh, and retained the Raw Women's Championship. Uh, continuing the fact that Becky Lynch has not been pinned is since, I believe, Money in the Bank 2019. If I'm wrong on that, feel free to correct me, to, uh, correct me down in the, uh, comments section, but I'm pretty sure it's Money in the Bank 2019 is the last time Becky Lynch was pinned. Now, granted, she was also off for about a year because of her pregnancy, but still. So we had the WWE Championship match. Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley. Uh, three-star match for the War Almost Tile match. Three and a half star match here. Wasn't wasn't long, but it didn't need to be. Uh, there's a ref bump, and then Roman Reigns comes in, and Paul Heyman turns on Brock Lesnar, which happened ironically nearly 20 years ago at Survivor Series. Uh, 2002, uh, Paul Heyman turned on Brock Lesnar. You would think that that might become a. You would think Brock might have been aware that that might happen, and then. Uh, that allowed Lashley to spear and pin Brock to win the WWE Championship. Three and a half stars. So then it's the mixed tag match. Edge and Beth Phoenix versus The Miz and Maurice. A uh, three-star mixed tag. Honestly, the only way this block feud could have continued anyway, and they could have just done this match at day one, so Edge could have been in the Royal Rumble. But uh, ends with a double grand slam and a double pin. And uh, Edge and Beth win. So then we get the 2022 Men's Royal Rumble, which wasn't as good as the women's. Now, it had its moments, but that doesn't mean a lot, you know? Uh, and again, I think a lot of people probably had too high of expectations going into this uh, as to what was going to happen, but... So we're out of AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura. So they revisited a WrestleMania, what was it, 35 match? The one they had in, uh, or 34? The one they had in, uh, New Orleans, uh, 2019? Yeah, I think it was 34. Uh, three was Austin Theory. Four was Robert Roode, who gets eliminated by, uh, Dolph, uh, by, uh, AJ really quick. And then AJ dumps Nakamura. Um... So, yeah. Then we had Ridge Holland making his Rumble debut at number 5. Then we had Montez Ford at 6. Damian Priest at 7. Sami Zayn at number 8. And then Johnny Knoxville at number 9. And Knoxville does on Sami Zayn and takes a frog splash and some other stuff. But then gets eliminated by Sami Zayn. Who then gets eliminated by AJ Styles. Uh, Angelo Dawkins comes out at 10. Almost comes out at 11. Eliminates Damian Priest and the Street Profits. And then Chad Gable comes out at, and then Ricochet comes out at 13, Chad Gable comes out at 14, 
or 13, Chad Gable comes out of uh, 13. Ricochet is 12, uh, Gable is 13. Uh, and then Gable convinces everyone else to eliminate Omos, but that was after Omos eliminated Damian Priest. Uh, and they all do, and they eliminate Omos. Uh, Dominic Mysterio is number 14. Happy Corbin is 15. Dolph Ziggler is 16. Sheamus is 17, and right as he's entering, Ridge Holland gets eliminated. Um, so, 18 was Rick Boogs. 19 was Mad Cat Moss. 20 was Riddle. 21 was Drew McIntyre, who quickly eliminates, who quickly eliminates both Happy Corbin and Mad Cat Moss. Uh, 22 is Kevin Owens, 23 is Rey Mysterio, 24 is Kofi Kingston, and the thing that I always knew eventually would happen if WWE kept insisting on doing these eventually happened as Kofi Kingston botched his Rumble save, and he hit the floor when he was not supposed to, and thus had to be eliminated. But then again, Kofi is not going to be able to top his hand walk, in my opinion, he did in 2012, so he should have stopped trying a long time ago about that. Anyway, 25 was Otis, 26 was Big E, 27 was Bad Money, he's back, <laughs> um, 28 was Shane McMahon, so there's your two surprise entries, well, okay, there, whatever, uh, 29 was Randy Orton, and number 30 was Brock Lesnar, uh, who pretty much eliminated everybody who was in the ring from when he got there, uh, final four in this match were... Shane McMahon, Randy Orton, where Shane McMahon, Drew McIntyre, Riddle, and Brock Lesnar, and Brock eliminated all three of them, and then Brock goes to WrestleMania. Uh, AJ was the longest lasting guy, and I think it was 30 minutes, and Brock and AJ were tied for most of them, and AJ had six eliminations, uh, so that was most. And in the Women's Rumble, Charlotte had the most eliminations. She had... Five eliminations, and Bianca Belair was long as lasting 47 minutes. Uh, I give this Royal Rumble three and a half stars out of a potential, uh, yeah. Not a horrible Rumble. Uh, Woman's was better, but anyone thinking the WWE would have allowed the Forbidden Door, uh, yeah. They, I mean, they could have, but they didn't. Uh, it wasn't even much of a Forbidden Door of Mickie James in the first place, but... And he, again, after having Mickey James show up in this room, they just quickly decided to slam the forbidden door anyway and never open it again. Uh, so, yeah. That's my review of the 2022 Royal Rumble pay-per-view. The letter grade will be in the description of this video. Uh, as will the total star rating. If you like this video, like button is down there. Subscribe button is down there. Thank you for watching. Bye.